Hey everyone and welcome back to Battleborn. I've got a new build for you. This one is for Orendi and I call it Chaotic Aggression. The idea with this build is you run in and unleash a flurry of skills that do a buttload of damage while you bounce around like a coked up psychopath and then you either kill what you were after and eat their eyes or you run away and wait for your skills to come off of cooldown. Now the way you're going to unleash that flurry of skills is by taking advantage of Orendi's Gnosis passive ability. So whenever you use Nullify, it's going to decrease the cooldown of Shadowfire Pillar. So that means you can Shadowfire Pillar, hit your Nullify, and then after a few seconds you can throw out another Shadowfire Pillar. And then once you level up and you get some Helix Augments, there, you can actually make it so there's no delay in that combo. So um, you can Shadow Fire Pillar, Nullify, and then immediately Shadow Fire Pillar again. And if you're level 5, you can end all of that with an ultimate, which is just going to lay waste to an entire area. It's just ridiculous amounts of AE damage. Alright, so if that sounds like your type of build, let's jump into the Helix and I'll show you how to set it up. Alright, so for level 1, we are going with Fire Walk With Me on the left. That's going to add a Trail of Fire to our Nullify, which does damage over time. Level 2, we are going to the right with I Hate Your Pretty Eyes. This is going to add a Blind to Nullify, which is great for temporarily confusing the enemy about your location and avoiding further damage. Level 3, we're going to the left with Let's Bounce. That's going to shoot Orendi in the direction she's moving when she uses Nullify rather than straight back like it normally does. This is great for being really aggressive and uh, just making your movements unpredictable and it's really good for dropping the Nullify trail of fire damage on the enemy. Um, otherwise, if you just shoot straight back, you can't really do it, but shooting straight through somebody makes it really easy to drop that uh, trail of flame onto them. Alright, level 4, we are going to the left with Preamble of Pain. This adds a damage over time to the area around our Shadowfire Pillar before it explodes, which is basically guaranteed damage, uh, which is really nice. Even if your pillar ends up missing, you're still going to do damage. Level 5, we're going to the left with Prognostication. That increases that increases Gnosis' cooldown uh, reduction effect, which makes it so now your combo has no delay. Shadowfire Pillar, Nullify, Shadowfire Pillar right away. Alright, level 6, we're going to the right with Shadow Fury. That's going to increase Shadowfire Pillar's base damage. Level 7, we go to the left with Force of Will, that increases all skill damage by 15%. Really, really nice. Level 8, we're going to uh, decrease our cooldown time on Nullify by going to the left with Rapid Deterioration. And then level 9, we're going to decrease the cooldown time on Shadowfire Pillar by going to the left for Shadowfire Storm. And then level 10, we're going straight up the middle with Pillar Storm. This has the potential to just do silly multi-kills. It's, it's going to drop a Shadowfire Pillar uh, below every nearby Battleborn. So if you get into a situation where there's a bunch of enemy players near you and you shoot off your ultimate, you're going to just drop... You're going to carpet bomb their whole area with uh, Shadowfire Pillars, which, like I said, it can give you some crazy multi-kills. All right, so those are the Helix choices that I make. Let me show you my gear. So this first set is the expensive set that I run for Incursion and Meltdown. The first item is sur this Survivor's Regrowth Serum. It adds 7 health regen per second and then 4.2 health regen per second if I stay alive for 3 minutes or more. Well, after 3 minutes I get the extra boost to my health regen. And uh, it's really nice for Orendi because it's hard to damage Orendi. So uh, having the health regen just lets her stay in the fight without having to go back to a healing station or uh, back to base. So that's why I like to run health regen on her. Uh, the second item I go with is this eviscerating endoskeletal graft. Uh, adds attack damage and attack speed. That's only going to affect 
her uh, just regular attacks with the right trigger with uh, R2. Uh, but it's really nice uh, for using between your skill flurries. Uh, I don't like... Uh, I don't like her no her projectiles uh, at the default levels, and this gives them the boost that I like to make them more effective. And then this third item I go with, this one's more for fun, to be honest. It's this Lorian skill spike. It gives me skill damage and movement speed, which are both great. And then it has this... Uh, it, it gives the chance for your skills uh, to have 50% bonus damage, so a 7% chance. Uh... If you hit somebody with your ultimate with 50% extra damage attached to it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, so that's mostly why, why I use this item for those situations where the ultimate just gets this ridiculous bonus damage and just wipes everyone out. Uh, so that's why I go with it. It may not be the most practical item, but it's super fun. Uh, some other items you might uh, decide to go with instead, you could use her ultimate which is good. Uh, if you miss the Shadowfire Pillar, the next one has bonus damage. Uh, you could also just go with uh, a white skill damage item, just a really cheap skill damage item because that's the most important part of this item is the skill damage. The other parts are just for fun, or at least uh, as far as I'm concerned. So that's why I use that. Okay, so uh, the cheap set I go with for capture uh, the first item I go with is this Artificial Vitae. That's 7 health regen per second. And I've got this Cognitive Predictor, which gives me 9.1% skill damage increase. And then I've got this Unstable Biorhythmic Timer. Decreases my cooldown times by 7% and adds recoil, which does not affect Arendi. And this one's a free item. Alright, so those are my Helix choices and the gear that I go with. Let me jump, uh, let's jump to some clips and I'll explain to you how the level progression works with this build. For levels 1 and 2, I normally play more passively and just try to level up by blowing up minion waves with my pillars and getting crystals to get my health regen item up. The blind at level 2 is certainly good for getting up close and personal, but I typically don't like to play as aggressively with Arendi until I have that health regen and I'm at level 3. Level 3 gets you the Let's Bounce Helix, which lets you choose the direction your Nullify is going to move you. This is an amazing mobility maneuver and great for your skill combo because it lets you put your Trail of Fire onto the enemy. Let's Bounce also makes your movements way more erratic, which makes you harder to hit and usually makes it easier to land the next pillar because the enemy is more worried about finding out where you went rather than dodging things on the ground. Level 4 gets you the damage over time around your pillars, which is just a nice boost to your damage, and it's guaranteed damage rather than the all or nothing that the pillars normally are. So if you're bad at aiming those pillars, this helps you quite a bit to still do that damage. Level 5 makes your skill combo no longer have a delay because of the boost to your passive's cooldown reduction, and you can finish off that combo with your brand new ultimate, which is incredible damage and has great range. The ultimate fits into your skill combo so incredibly well because it has that incredible range, so even if the enemy is running away, it's going to hit them unless they manage to turn a corner. Orendi's ult is easily one of the best damage ults in the game, and if you're running the Lorian skill spike like me, it can do silly amounts of damage if you get lucky. Level 6 makes the skill combo even better by increasing Shadowfire Pillar's damage. More damage is always good with Orendi, and if you're being super mobile and just treating her as a hit and run character with her skill combo, you're going to drive people insane. You're going to show up, do a ton of damage, be super hard to hit, and then hightail it out of there just to come back like 10 seconds later and do it all over again. After dealing with that for an entire game, the enemy team is going to hate your guts, and anytime you can get people frustrated, you can usually force them into some bad mistakes. 
Level 7 is a huge level because all of your skill damage gets increased by 15%. Considering Shadowfire Pillar is a huge part of your damage and it just got buffed on the previous level, your damage just jumped up dramatically in two levels. A single pillar by itself will usually clear a wave now uh, unless they're overshielded. Your entire skill combo gets a huge buff off of this, so you should have no problems blowing people to smithereens if you can land those skills. Of course, that's uh, the difficulty of Arendi is actually landing those skills, but with a lot of practice, you get better at predicting enemy movements, and it's gonna get easier and easier for you to land those. Level 8 decreases the cooldown of Nullify, which on its own is a nice thing to have since you can use it as an escape outside of your skill combo in desperate situations. However, when combined with the cooldown reduction to Shadowfire Pillar at level 9, it means your skill combo will be available much more often, which is your bread and butter for destroying enemy players. Having your hit and runs happening more frequently and dealing a lot more damage is simply overwhelming and that's kind of the point of Arendi. You want to just turn her into this just damage nightmare for the other team and, and just overwhelm them. Just apply that pressure over and over and over again and eventually you're going to break through or at least that's what you hope to do. You're going to break through and just tear them apart. Level 10 gets you Pillar Storm, which is like the final icing on the cake of an already redunculous skill combo. By some miracle, if the enemy managed to live through your combo, they've also got to move themselves out of a pillar as well. Well there you have it folks, the chaotic aggression build for Orendi. I hope you enjoy it and let me know how it works out for you in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.